Charles Darwin transformed the way that we understand the natural world. He travelled the globe, gathering information about animals, plants, fossils and rocks, taking part in expeditions to Argentina, Brazil, Chile and the Galapagos. He gave us insights into the diversity of life on Earth. Darwin's collections and records provided the evidence he needed to develop a remarkable theory. Evolution by natural selection. Today, many of his important specimens are housed here at the Natural History Museum and at our site in Tring. But who looks after them? And what are the stories behind these treasures from the past? As we're about to find out, Darwin's specimens are so much more than dusty bones and taxidermy. So let's take a look at three examples from the sky, land and sea. First stop, we're heading to Tring in Hertfordshire to meet one of the best known species from Darwin's work. And if you're a Londoner, this might not be quite what you're expecting. Hello, Hein. Hello. Thank nice to have you here. No, thank you so Hello. much for having us here at Tring. It's lovely to see you. Um, First up, can you tell us what you do here at the museum? Um, I'm one of the bird curators looking after the skin collection. And um, as a curator, yeah, you look after the specimens. That doesn't mean you have to feed them, but make sure that they're in good condition. But um, yeah, I would say everything behind the scenes that has to do with the collection um, is what we curators do. Fantastic. And you have brought uh, some very exciting specimens for us to look at today. Tell us what we have here. Well, I'm pleased to hear you think they're exciting. Yes, they're, they're pigeons. And most people say, well, pigeons, well, what, what's so special about pigeons? Now, these are not any pigeons. These are Darwin's pigeons. <laughs> and um, everybody is full about Darwin's finches in evolution. But Darwin didn't look at the finches. Darwin looked at the pigeons. The pigeons gave him all the ideas about evolution and how it worked. And these are a few of the examples he used. We have about 60 of his specimens, but this is a random sample of specimens he used to convince himself, but to find the proof how evolution worked. So yeah, they're quite special pigeons. They are very yeah. special. I'm really excited. This is the first time that I've, I've seen, seen okay. these pigeons. So it's, 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 it's a novelty for me. It's brilliant. Uh, so how long have they been in the collection? He donated them to the museum in 1867. Many of those I collected far before 1867. So um, yeah, they're pretty old specimens. Some of them are probably about 200 years old. It's incredible. They look in yeah. incredible condition. But well, not too bad. To you're doing honest. a really yeah, good yeah, job. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. So you, you mentioned these were important to um, Darwin's yeah. theory of natural selection. But what is natural selection? No, natural select, no, se selection in general is um, an individual with certain characteristics um, when they're slightly different from his fellow birds, animals, and they walk better. So it might get more offspring. So there was always said the survival of the fittest. Fittest mm -hmm. doesn't really mean the strongest. Fittest mean the best, the best adapted to his environment. Poor old Darwin was convinced that there was selection going on in, in, in the wild, so there was evolution, but he could not find, think of a single example in the wild. But what he used was all the examples in captivity, domesticated animals. It was not only pigeons, but pigeons was his main thing, but he looked at chickens, he looked at dogs, also many domesticated uh, species of plant. And the fact that, if you look at this, this bird, you would think, oh, I see those in London. Yeah. <laughs> um, correct, but this is the wild rock dove. Just as all the dogs descend from the wolf, all domesticated pigeons descend from the rock dove. In principle, a very nice looking bird, but most people, well, it's a bit grey, isn't it? No, it's two nice black bars, a bit of shiny colour in his neck. But this grey rock dove, people over the years managed to breed all that diversity and variation in them. For example, there might have been a rock, because rock doves are already kept for their meat and for eggs. Um, at some point, there might have been one, instead of being grey, got all black. Hmm. People thought, that's interesting, we keep that. We keep breeding with that. Then you got one who got a few white feathers. People thought, oh, that's nice, we keep that. So then and you finally ended up with a pigeon totally different. Same species, but totally different. Different colour, white feathers, even has a little bit of a crest. That is unnatural selection. So the forces to select was 
human beings, I thought, oh, I like the black ones above the grey ones. I keep the black one. Um, if it was nature, you could have said, oh, the black one might have done better than the grey one. Who knows? And that means that the black one breeds more. Because it is unnatural selection, yes, the black one will breed more because people wanted the black ones and then the white ones. And then you got a mutation that made them reddish brown instead of grey. With all that unnatural selection, does it give a possible from a species to change it into something completely different. That was Darwin's proof that evolution, selection works. But again, he did not know a single example in the wild. That's why he used domesticated animals, mainly pigeons, um, as his examples. So did Darwin actually breed these pigeons? That's how he helped to, to prove his, his theory. He bred them in himself. Um, he did breed pigeons for, for a few years, and so he kept live pigeons, and, and I said he did breed a little bit. He got also, he had lots of contacts all over the world, so people sent him specimens from all over the world. But this one came from the Shetland Islands, and according to Darwin, on the Shetland Islands was still a pure stock of wild rock doves. So this was in fact his norm, this was where they come, that's, that's why it looks probably so awful, because Darwin has fiddled with it probably endlessly well handled, to, to, to yeah. compare it constantly with the other ones. But yeah. This was the norm, grey. So it's commonly thought that finches were, were key to, to Dar Darwin developing his theories, but would you say that, that these pigeons were just as important? Those pigeons were far more important because Darwin never ever used his finches. He does not mention the finches once in his origin of species. He did not use the example of the beaks. It's a brilliant example of evolution. He didn't recognise it, he didn't know it. That whole beak story, that was not made up, but came up. Um, scientists later, after Darwin, recognised it, start using it. And then the term Darwin finch was introduced. Mm. The term Darwin finch was not in Darwin's time. Darwin unfortunately missed the chance to use it because he simply did not recognise it. He did recognise it in pigeons. He did not recognise it in the wild species. So it should be Darwin's pigeons. Absolutely. <laughs> and everybody who wants to study Darwin should not go to the finches, they should go to the pigeons. Absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. It's, it's wonderful to see them. It's, it's a real privilege actually to, to see such special um, specimens. Are um, Darwin's pigeons still be being used in, in science today? To, to um, yes, yes and no. Um, I'm particularly interested in domestication. So for me to see, I mean, I recognise this breed. This is what they call a Jacobin. Now the modern Jacobins nowadays don't look at all like this bird. So for me it's really interested. So, but there is not much study going on with domesticated animals. But having said that, this particular one, Darwin thought this was the norm. This is the wild rock dove. It's a pure rock dove from the Shetlands. Quite recently, um, we are doing a study with rock doves from all the wild ones from all over the world, um, and we included the Shetland ones. This particular specimen was DNA tested to see if it was indeed a pure one or that it had already genes in from domesticated birds. It was a pure one. Having said that, only on the Shetlands. There is still quite a pure population of rock doves. All the rest of the British rock doves, um, and they're called rock doves because they live on rocks and cliffs. So the proper wild ones you will only find along the coast. All the ones in London look the similar. It's the same species, but it's what we call feral pigeons. Um, they have been domesticated, their ancestors in the past, but um, escaped, got released, and they help themselves now, so they're pretty good. And let's face it, the buildings are like rocks. So for pigeons, London is brilliant. <laughs> but yeah, this specimen is recently a DNA tested. Darwin was right, it was a pure one, there's no domesticated genes in it. And now with modern samples we used, uh, the Shetland uh, rock dove is still the purest of all. So yeah, they are sometimes used, but not in the way Darwin did. But who knows in the future? Um, they are available. Um, so if people want to see them for a reason, not simple because I want to see them, <laughs> um, they are available for research. Fantastic. And I, Darwin could probably never have imagined the sorts of technology that we'd have today, that the things that we can do oh, with yeah, the specimens. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I also, <laughs> sounds a bit silly, but I also like to think that he would be pleased that his pigeons are now looked after by somebody who really appreciates pigeons and is keeping Definitely. pigeons himself and breeds them. That, yeah. Definitely, I think yeah. he would be extremely yeah. happy. <laughs> I hope so, yeah. <laughs> well, this has yeah. been fascinating, Hein. Thank you so much You're for welcome. showing us these brilliant specimens today. But I am going to have to head back to our South Kensington site because there are some other specimens calling my name. Oh, you're lucky. <laughs> you have a good trip back then. Thank you. And hope to see you soon again. 
Well, that was a fascinating chat. I had no idea how important pigeons were to Darwin's theories, even more so than finches. Well, I'm heading now to our Earth Sciences Library to meet Neil Adams, who's a curator of fossil mammals here at the museum. If you want to check out that chat and meet an amazing Toxodon specimen, you can click here. And remember, if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe to the Natural History Museum.